And now tell me about the five steps. So the five steps to it, again, is finding your passion. And I have been in many different uh, roles from assisting people through layoffs and career transition. And a lot of times what I find is people have that passion. That's why I put the key on the heart for the cover of the book. Okay. They have the answer, but a lot of times they're blocking the out for, with so much outside noise. My family thinks I should do this. My society thinks I mm -hmm. should do this. So the first step is really being honest with yourself. And even if it is a transition from science to health care, or if it's, you know, it seems completely out there, I think it's important for you to be honest with what that is. And then being really clear on what your strengths are. So your passion and your strengths are two important parts. And then really trusting your gut and believing in yourself. Because I have seen people do leaps of faith to get their, to get their career. I have a friend that um, she went out to uh, be a yoga teacher. And people said, you cannot do this. You don't have any teaching experience. And she said, well, it's kind of a, the chicken and the egg experience. I need to teach yeah, to get yeah, the experience. Yeah, exactly. And so one day she went to class. The teacher failed to appear. She stood up. She says, I'm a yoga teacher. I can teach this class. Are you willing to do it? And they right. said, sure. And she got the job. So in this market, oh, wow. you need to be able to really tr to have that confidence within yourself to step up when that opportunity presents itself, right? And you need to show up to work or somebody else might steal your job. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. So that's an important uh, step, too, is trust your gut and believe in yourself. Market and sell yourself. Um, I know somebody recently that got a job because he was the only person to hand deliver his resume with a presentation right away. So almost like that elevator speech that everybody talks about. Mm -hmm. He went in, he said, you know, I really want to personally deliver this and this is why I feel that I'm the right person for this job. And it was a fundraising role. So he needed to be able to step up to the plate and, and present himself well in that role. Right. So there he was, he got the job. And then the other thing is really networking and a support team because I, I really found that when you're pursuing your passion, which a lot of people will tell you, it's impossible. Why do you want to do that? Right. You need people around you that really believe in you and that support you and mentors and coaches because a lot of times we don't need to reinvent the wheel to follow our passion. There are people mm -hmm. out there that did it before. Um, so, and, and networking. We know that that's like the number one key too. And in this economy right now, people really need to leverage that as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, it's funny. One of my favorite stories is a, uh, one of my first clients actually, she says, I don't even have any passion. And I said, oh, yes, you do. And so we, and it was funny. <laughs> the saddest things I think I've ever heard. I know. It's, it's because I think a lot of times people block that because mm -hmm. they, you know, it's impossible. I can't, I can't live that. So it was interesting because her mom actually hired me to help her because she was a recent, recent grad from college. And I, we, after an hour of asking her a million questions, we came up with global women policy issues in Sacramento. I said, well, so much for not having any passion because right. we just figured it out. And I said, you need to tell every single person you know that that's what you want to do and the funniest thing is her mom's friend got her a job in that area and her mom had been trying for a long time I said the clearer you are and what it is you want to do the easier even, it is it easier it is it. it is and so the last step is really putting together a plan because a lot of times I hear people say I want to be in news or I want to do something like that but they don't put, to, put together a concrete plan so start with the big vision of what it, what it is you want to do and be willing to move boxes or be willing right. to, to take one step. I say just be willing to do one thing a day. If that's research, sending in an email, whatever it is, be willing to do it. Another interesting thing that I've seen people do too is put together concept papers where they may, for example, to somebody that we had worked with is interested in, in online security. Okay. And he had a unique approach to how he could solve these issues. He could talk to our next guest too. Then the next guest <laughs> about security, that's right. And so he actually presented this to a company, said, you know, I have a really unique background in security, and this is how I think that I could help you solve these particular issues. Right. And so they are really interested in talking to him. So that in this economy, it's not applying only online. It's not doing that. You have to be creative right. and come up with solutions for, for companies. And so how do you know that you're being realistic, though, about that passion? I mean, one, and I use this example all the time, but, you mm -hmm. know, if I want to play for the NBA, probably not going to happen. I'm 5'3". <laughs> yeah. so, so what happens if people's passion is, is just very unrealistic? Or, I mean, even something simple, I've heard a lot of people say that I would love to do that, but... I, don't, I won't make enough money doing it. They've gotten accustomed to a certain lifestyle and maybe switching gears will cost them that and they're not willing to make that sacrifice. How do you tackle both of those issues? Exactly. Well, you know, it's been interesting because I, what I found, I think the sports example is so great because the honest truth is that I'm five feet tall too, so I'm never going to make it to the NBA right. either. So, I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. 
But what I find was it really interesting is watching people find a niche within that industry. Maybe mm -hmm. they're a sports writer. Maybe they do the production for that. So it is it's staying within that industry. You know, maybe even in music too, you could do music production, but you may not be a great singer. So mm -hmm. how can you find a niche within that area so you're surrounded by your passion? So that's okay. one area. Um, in terms of making money, I, you know, it's interesting. They you, earlier on the, sh on the on the show on Fox, they had the stylist from Job Hunt, mm -hmm. and he was saying that he made a quarter of a million dollars a year in finance. But he realized that sty 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 being a stylist was his passion, so he went down to sixty thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. But he was smart in that role when he was making a lot of money. He saved a lot of money in that role. He said he never ever regrets it. And now he's obviously skyrocketed past that. So a lot of times when you're following your passion, the money may not be there in the beginning, but it comes. Okay. So we're, uh, we're going to move over to our package and our commercial break. But any sort of parting thoughts you have for us before you leave us today, Marcy? I think that for not to wait. I, I get so many people, you know, that later on say, I really wish that I had just taken those steps each day to do something. So whatever that is today, pick up a book about your passion, Start letting your network know what you want to do. Take one step today and continue to do that. And what if you're in a position where maybe you can't leave your job right now, maybe you're really strapped financially mm -hmm. or, or you're really strapped for time, one or the other, and you really feel like you can't do it? How do you get the ball rolling? Well, I think the client that I mentioned that was the, the science to HR, she mm -hmm. was a great example because she, she worked a lot of hours in the lab, but whenever she could, she found the time to, to give to in a volunteer role. So I tell people, whenever you can do that at night, be reading, weekend, be volunteering. So, so create that time within your day. And when do, when do you spend time with the family or do, or do fun things? <laughs> well, ex oh, in, in fact, in my book, I put that because I, that's a really good point you bring up because life is not just your career. Right. And so, yeah, it is. I have a segmented thing where it's career, family, health, you know, the, every finance. You actually have to take the time for that. So... It's amazing what you can fit into your week if you, if you schedule it properly. Even one person I know, is every, every, lunch, every lunch time, he takes somebody out to lunch in his area of his passion. Huh. So there are creative ways to do it. Get up early. Meet somebody for breakfast. All right. And where can people go to find out more? They can go to my website. It's careerswithwings.com.